keys, keys, I got keys, keys, keys. I am not allowed to play music because Instagram is going to show us down. So, you guys are going to get, I got the keys, keys, keys. I got the keys, keys, keys. Hello there. What's going on? I am rapping, singing, whatever it is that I'm doing. I am not allowed to play music because I get us into copyright issues. And then Instagram doesn't want us to be great. So, I got the keys, keys, keys is the topic of tonight. Because women want keys to a man's... I figured it was their finances, their home, or their heart. So those mm. are the three things. But which are easier for men to give? Finances, home, or heart? So that's going to be the conversation tonight. Um, because I put the question out there. That's going to be a doozy. That's going to be something. And I'm going to, you know, we're going to, as usual, use our own personal experience. We don't talk about these topics before we do them often. Um, we just kind of get into it. So sometimes he doesn't even know where we're going. So, <laughs> but it's been one hell of a week. I am going to get into what a week it's been. Um, it's been a roller coaster bit of a week. Um, some exciting things have happened. Um in our lives, uh, the most exciting thing I will share later because I want everyone to uh, support what's going on back in Toronto. Um, so yeah, hey, our sponsor Sorlin and Sage is on, and girl, we are talking the keys, the keys to a man's finances, his home, or his heart, which is the most important if you had to choose because you cannot have it all. And that's a question for women, right? That's the question for women. The question for men is, what's easier to give a woman? The keys to your finances, the keys to your heart, or the keys to your home? That's going to be still a doozy. Because we can't have it all. I know we get this narrative that we can have it all. We can have it all. But what are you willing to compromise on? Because I think that there is always a level of compromise. I mean, there's compromise in life, period. But I think in relationships, there's this narrative that... We can have it all. I'm not sure where it came from. I don't think it's Disney. You know, I, you know how I feel about feminism. Uh, feminism didn't quite hit Jamaica. <laughs> the way it... Oh, thank God. It, <laughs> thank God. The way it, it hit North America. It didn't hit the Caribbean and I think Africa as much. So y'all had a different experience. But I do question this idea of having it all. And so we wanted to talk to people in terms of when you've got to make those compromises because they're all important. Um, our sponsor says, I ain't got none. <laughs> I'm done. That is a fantastic word. Elucidate. Lord of his mercy. It is she going really to be. To the she went to the thesaurus because, girl, I don't even know what elucidate means. And I think I'm pretty smart. Explain elucidate, I'm not Robert. I'm trying to define it. No. So I'm going to go pick up my phone. You can do that, but I'm not going to even attempt And to I am going to define. Another word. Elucidate. Hold on. Let me put on my patois because she, she give me a big word. I'm off to find it. Elucidate. Oh, to make something clearer. Explain. Girl, you couldn't just explain it. All right. Oh, hey. <laughs> That's what I heard, but I didn't want to try. I hate trying to define words because I usually use another word that people don't know. Oh, Lord of his mercy. <laughs> yeah, so we are going out. to girl me get it. No, me done up on the people that have the internet. Um, so we are going to make that clear. Yes, girl, expound. See, that was, yeah, well, elucidate. My Hannah favorite, Berkeley. elaborate. Okay, so we are definitely going to, and I'm going to be curious. Again, I'm going to, I guess I'll have to answer the question from my end, from the female, and you will have to answer the question um, that I put. Yes, you're very speaky sporky. Um, that's what Jamaicans say for speaking mm -hmm. well and all that stuff speaky spooky um but yeah you'll have to answer for the men's side and yeah we're gonna wait we're giving a couple of minutes for people to come in but um robert how's your week been Oof. very mentally draining but very i got some really exciting news but i'm the type that until the chicken hatches you're not gonna send I don't really do a fist bump or nothing like that. So again, over the next few weeks, we'll kind of keep y'all going on on what's going on. But I had some very, very good news. Um, I should be transitioning pretty soon into another situation, and um, 
wanted to be a lot, lot, lot better for Just me. because the situation isn't replacing me. No, 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 no I'm not talking about that. No, not replacing I'm sure her. some days he wants to. I'm just joking. No, you're well, not. Well, maybe. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. You're, you're positives outweigh your funkinesses. So. Oh, okay, good to know. Because again, you cannot have it all. No, you can't even have close to it. But that's me, I'm telling you, I might seem in a little bit of an off mood. And that is literally because I listened to, what was it, last night's broadcast? Of Kevin of Samuels. Kevin Samuels. And it just, man, I'm glad I am not a person of a very sensitive psychology. But man, that made me kind of feel like, wow, there is... Some serious discourse in these streets, man. Well, the streets are hard, right? The streets, the streets aren't easy. I, I, if I, if I'm honest with myself, I would not want to be out in them single streets. Man, I listened to this I young girl not. basically say a man needed a million dollars to deal with her, and she was. <sighs> and it's like the way she was just throwing out. Numbers like it was numbers nothing. like yeah like a million dollars at six or figures started six to a quarter did. million this is annual salary ladies and gentlemen yeah this went went to quarter salary. million then it went to five hundred thousand and then she ended up probably needs to make up more than a million yeah yeah and it's just it was a lot it, it was it went way longer then there was a couple of other situations but man you know y'all say that we're being hard on black women and we're not men is just. What's the opposite of feminism? I don't know. Masculinism. Masculinism. That's what you're, it is. Well, you're being emasculated. Men are very much on board masculinism right now. <laughs> That's really what it is. Let me really see if there is a masculinism to do with y'all. Movement. It's just men are fed up, yo. Like, I, oh, I'm, I'm going to send up a prayer for Mr. Kevin Samuels because... He sometimes comes across as a man on edge. I'm thinking when you've been doing that, thousands of conversations. Again, he's not exaggerating. There is At masculinism. Point, there is a it's masculinism movement. Yeah, it, it, it's yo. That's what it is. Man is like honestly, fuck feminism. Like that shit is ridiculous. And I'm speaking uh, as a, a girl dad. You know, I want my daughter to have equal choices. I don't want her running around in this world thinking that she's equal to a man that she can poke a man in his chest and that there's not repercussions to that. Like, that's that's insane. Because another man can't poke a man in the chest. So I don't know why women think they should be able to. Well, I was accused this week of having, well, over the last 24 hours, you didn't even know this, of having pick-me energy. Because, yes, apparently. <laughs> huh. Yeah, elaborate. Elaborate. Um, Elucidate. Uh, um, I have a, uh, I've been told that I have pick me energy because again, I, this time I wasn't flagged, thank God for hate speech, because I dared to advocate for men. Um, and so I was told that I was the pick me girl. And of course, as a woman, they, you know, then one girl said, you know, that's to be said of a woman who has no children. Because essentially there was this uh, thing on, you know, one of the spiritual worlds or one of those places. And it was basically showing a scene um, from a show. And the mother was berating the son uh, in front of his baby mother about kind of not stepping up to the plate because the, you know, I'm sure it was some Tyler Perry movie. Um, but... <laughs> But wasn't doing enough. And I went there and I said, when are we going to start having these conversations about accountability and choices? We all have choices in the situation. And you know what? Since we have a couple of minutes as people are coming on, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to read. Because you, you need to know why I was told this week I have pick me energy. And it went back and forth with a number of women um, who didn't like my comments. So I'm going to start with the, the thing. She's mad. Because every six months, you want to roll up in here and tell people what to do. Well, this is a 24-7 job. Mm. Do you understand me? I don't care what you think about her. This one, the mother of your child, she is a damn good mother. Whether she's sick, when she's tired, when she just plain old don't feel like it. She don't have anybody to pass the baton to. Nobody here to pass it to. She's the first one up in the morning and the last one to go down at night. She's the mother, the father, the doctor, the nurse, the chauffeur, the therapist. And if she decides to leave her son behind and go chase after her dream, well, we're done to be else. So you may not like her, but you damn sure. 
shall go with so yes it is it is loretta divine mm -hmm. and so i think what peeved me off was once again the caption right Message to all these fathers that think it's fine to abandon your kids or just send money versus being present. And because Toshiba Monique does not know how to clean her mouth shut, yeah, I probably, opened I think I know what you said too. a Pandora's box. So I went into, how about we deliver a message to women that they shouldn't make families with men who only want pum pum? If you don't want a child, make him wear a condom. If you get pregnant and make the choice to keep it without his input of whether he wants a baby with you, then deal with the consequences of your choice. We need to stop promoting these BS narratives that men are running away from fatherhood. They simply don't want forced fatherhood or having to play nice to have access to their child or children. Ooh. Like I said, I pretty much thought I, I figured what you said. That's about... 85% of what I expected you to say, probably higher than that even. And I'm certain in response to that post, they were pissed off. Of course they were picked off, pissed off. So I got the first comment was um, from, I am my ancestors too, girl. Uh, yes, yeah, say that BS one more time, pick Misha. Since the men don't have any ounce of responsibility in your world, one more time for the picker uppers in the back. They love you. They don't have to be accountable at all. Um, and then one woman actually agreed. She said, amen, because we control our own wombs. Thank you. And that was my point, right? Like, it is so quick to create the narrative that men are bad and men are this and men. But I think as women, we have to be accountable. And I had to, you know, I'll go a little bit further, but... One of the girls, I said, because then she asked me, she tried to bring Trey into it, but what are you teaching your daughter? You better be teaching her that there are bad men out there. And I was like, I'm sorry. There's bad decisions out there. That's what I basically said. I said, I've learned in my life that I am accountable for my decisions and my decisions alone. I can control my decisions and my decisions alone. I cannot control the decisions of another person. Therefore, I have to deal with said consequences of my decision. That is what I'm teaching my daughter. You are accountable for your decisions, yours alone. It doesn't matter what happens. I was talking to Joanne today. I said, you could rise to the level of CEO of a major bank and turn around at 50 years old and say, you don't want me anymore. You want to trade me in for a 35 year old because I have expired in your eyes. There's nothing I can do. I have absolutely no control over that decision. I now have to make a decision that's best for me. I am accountable and responsible for the decisions I made getting into this relationship and everything I, I did to help you get there for you to want to trade me in. I can be upset at you, but I can't blame you entirely. Mm -hmm. Right? But I think, you know, and this this is this is a part of the conversation about the keys. Because at the end of the day, we are responsible for the choices we make in relationships. Whatever decision we make, whatever door we decide to go through, whichever one we decide is more important, we are responsible. The other person is only responsible for their decision and their choices. That's how I look at life. Because if I ran around thinking to myself, oh my God, I can't make this decision because I don't know what decision Rob's going to make. And so I'm going to wait for Rob's decision. So I make a decision. But what about, like, it's, it, I don't have time for that. Anywho, let me go further in. Yeah, please. So I responded to the girl that called me Pekisha. I said, I've already been chosen, my love. I'm good over here. I don't have daddy issues. So I know how to use logic and not feelings to win an argument. You should try it. I then went on. Someone and say, um, they, what they say, they do deliver that message constantly. Stop muling. I don't even know what muling is. Yeah, Some of these you. things. Um, so then another person says, spoken like a woman with no children. Most of these babies are made while fairly young. People grow apart, grow up, etc. No one says, I only want the poem. And women are like, okay, let's have a baby. It's a bunch of finesse that goes on. Accountability on both ends are needed. Agreed. Can we stop with that bullshit? What's that? This, this, what percentage of relationships where there's children involved that have passed a decade actually wind up breaking down? 
Probably well, not many. Thank you. These it's a lower should be one, it's a lower one year relationship, two yeah. year relationships. Is one, two kids in these one, two, three year relationships. And y'all trying to justify that bullshit. No. So let me continue. I said to the girl who told me about having no kids, I said, you made a very huge assumption about me without any research. It would have taken you two seconds to go on my page to see that I am indeed a mother. I have a 20 year old that I had at 21, a child I chose to have out of wedlock and put no blame on her father for that decision. Women choose who are born and conversely, we can choose who aren't. As women, we need to hold ourselves and other women accountable for our choices and action. However, what is happening in our community is we blame men for everything instead of realizing that the our body, our choice movement requires accountability and responsibility for those choices. Um, so you had a child at 21. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you have someone cast some like spell of protection or something over you? No. <laughs> How did you not have any more kids? Because I made a choice not to. <gasps> You can it's do a that. novel idea, you right? You can do that? It's a novel idea to make a choice not to you have can actually children. Do that. Yes, you can. And I know. Some of y'all want to do it. Yo. <laughs> it's a novel idea that I could have made a choice not to have a baby. And again, I know it's going to come for it. It's like, oh, well, be careful. Tread lightly. You got two baby mamas. Like, why? Again, why are women trying to put an equal sign in between men and women? It's not equal. And I don't care how hard y'all try or how much y'all don't like it. It's never going to be. God didn't design us to be equal. We're equal halves of the same whole. But we have a role and you have a role. And unfortunately, leadership, protection, and provision fell on males. Facts. So as usual, our sponsor is coming through in this cut. She said, mewling equals whining, squealing. It's a noise that a baby cat makes. Laugh out loud, carry on. She also said, choices in this modern world? God forbid, right? God forbid. But let me carry on. Um, she then said, not interested in doing research. <laughs> as usual. You should, just, you should just stop your comment right there. Not interested in doing research. That's why. Thanks for the clarification, though. You both had blame in the situation. There is no blame. We chose to have a baby. Why is there even blame when people choose? We made a conscious decision as two people to have a baby. There's blame when there's a child in the world and neither one of the parents is actually really prepared to make a way for that child. We both, or we sat down and actually people. had a discussion about having this child. Trayanne was, may have not been planned, wait, but her wor world into this world, we sat down and had a discussion. Uh, hold on. You can talk about yes. having a baby before you actually yes. have a baby? Yes, we can. So you may having a baby isn't like just <coughs> clapping the dice together. Oh, no, it gets better because one woman told me that it was. So she said, as usual, not interested in doing research. I truly heard for women that take blame for joint for joint decisions. Accountability is important, but too much of anything isn't healthy. Society puts blame on men and women just alike. It's just less mothers running away from their children than men. So the so the majority narrative will will always be discussed more. Huh. Too much accountability. There's a lot of things that you can have too much of. Water and accountability. You know how much water it takes to kill you, and you know how much accountability it takes to be a problem? Like you basically got to be willingly and consistently taking the blame for other people's issues to have a accountability, too much accountability issue. Listen. These women are so... So, I continued, because, but I had too much time, I think, today. Yeah. Then I went and on, I said... Mood too. You do, yeah, I was, I was in a mood today. I wanted to smoke today. I said, days. so then I responded to one of them. I said, do you truly believe in our community that women take just as much accountability as they force men to take? I'm very interested in your insight on this. From where I'm standing, that is not what I see. However, I am happy to acknowledge if my perspective is warped. Looking forward to your response. Because again, we have a show called Fuck Your Feelings. I'm not getting my feelings involved. Do you feel like there was any feelings? I didn't throw insults. I didn't talk about pick Misha. I didn't talk about any of that stuff. I'm talking. It gets even better. So then I went into somebody else and I said, let me ask you this. 
Do the facts align with women taking accountability for their actions when they have children out of wedlock or in failed relationships? If you were to do a focus group of 100 women, would the majority hold themselves accountable or would they blame the men with whom they have the child or children? Question mark. My life experience has taught me that I am responsible for my decisions and my decisions alone. I cannot control the decision of others. Therefore, I have to take full accountability for my part in any situation I find myself in. And that is what I am teaching my daughter. There are many men who wanted access to my pump home and got denied, even with the gifts and the flowers and sweet talk. As women, we control who gets access and who gets born. Also, babies don't just pop up. There are many factors that go into a woman getting pregnant. A man forcing a woman to have sex without a condom is illegal and he can face jail time for doing so. I've had many situations where I've either not had sex with a man or he had to find a 24-hour pharmacy to get a condom because without it, my pum pum was off limits. When I did not insist on that, I got pregnant and made a joint decision to have a baby knowing that our future was not bright. However, let's be honest that there are a lot of women who made the sole decision to have a child without input from the father, knowing that the probability of raising that child together was low. Before I turn this into a novel, I will end by saying, I hope you take the time to answer my questions from a place of facts, not feelings, because that's how I operate. You should check out my show, Fuck Your Feelings, that I host with my other half. Enjoy your day. <laughs> and I went into that because she... She went into something about, I know plenty of situations where women just got pregnant. And I was like, are they married? Like, please, because they're, 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 like, how did women just hop up pregnant? I would love to know. Someone Anyhow, like you, uh, that went on a little long, but that yeah, was kind of fun. giving you some insight into what has been going on in our life this week. So thank you for those who listen, but listen, yeah, I am just totally not like, when we do this show, this isn't us coming in on Thursday and putting on a good face and saying nice things and me sitting here and going, yeah, babe, that, and then we turn off the cameras and it's just ruckus and I'm like, you are for, like, that's not what we do. I truly try to advocate for the idea of accountability among women, specifically black women, because I'm a black woman. I can't speak for women of other races. Accountability among women is important and we have to deal with every single decision we make, everything from the men we get with to the men we give access to us to the men we do not give access to us to the men we didn't talk to when we were in our 20s who are now the men we wish we had in our 30s and 40s. Like that was all on us and this idea that if I had known better or I was young or I was 21 having a baby to me isn't young. No. I was old enough. Your mama was young when yeah. she had you. 14 and having a baby, young. Yeah. 21 and having a baby, I'm a whole ass adult and I had graduated university because of course we are the most educated people, right? So I had, I had had enough sense to finish high school and in Canada there was five years of high school. So I finished five years of high school and three years of university. So I would say that I was a grown woman. So this idea when people say I was young when they make made a decision or they give an excuse, that's not accountability. To me, there's no accountability there because you preface it with a I was and if it wasn't because and had I known, like to me, that's just not an excuse. Yeah, it's just, it's, like you said, there's no accountability. This is a topic. We'll get so off rails on it sometimes because just Women ain't trying to hear it, and that's why there's a real issue, because men ain't trying to hear it either. But who's complaining the most? The women are. Exactly. Women have the loudest voices. we're good over here. Either I'm going to have a woman like this, or I'm not going to have one. <laughs> Y'all feel me? Oh, facts. Either she's going to agree to do it my way, or we're not going to do it. How about that? So, the question that we asked today was, ladies, again, which key do you want first from a man? So, I was clear. Let me clear. It was first. Do you want the keys to his heart, the keys to his house, or the keys to his finances? And then I said, fellas, which key is easier for you to give a woman? House, finances, or heart? So, I'll turn it to you. Which would be easier to give to a woman? 
room. I got the keys, keys, keys. I got the keys, keys, keys. I don't. Let me not say it that way. That's a trick question. Okay. Because in my experience and what I've learned is that why do you need the keys to anything? You're with me. You have access to everything that I have. Do you? Do I have access to everything? That's, again, when a woman is first meeting you, I know I have access that's, to everything. That, that, that's like, I thing. personally have access to your heart, your finances, and the house. Like, I have it all. Okay? But most women aren't me. So I, I can't, I can't. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, of, no, there's a, like that woman that came on in between. She, she had been she, married for seven and years. She, it's great. She was kind of perplexed. Like, she was like, why are these women talking about stuff that don't matter? I get that. However, now in these modern world, think about your dating history. You don't. No, 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 yeah, no, I totally get it. No, okay. Like you said, there's a lot of masculine females out there. There's a lot of women trying to be equal to men, wondering why they can't get. Okay, a man. so that's great. But answer but my back question. Back to the question. Easier. Which is easier to give someone? How's be, harder finances? Easier would probably be house from the perspective of usually that's the first thing a guy is willing to do is let you move in. Now, interesting. So you think there, a guy will let you move in before he gives you access to his heart? I think he's that's it's easier to put you out than to <laughs> give his heart. Now. You feel me? Like I'm, I'm, I know it sounds jack, but that's, that's what I'm saying. Funny. Again, I think. The guys that really are on their time ain't giving up the keys to nothing. They, their life is a freight train. And if you want to jump on board, you can move on that freight train. Yeah. But when you start, well, no, 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 over there. That's when he's like, okay, then you need to hop off and head over there. Okay. So, bringing you so back bringing on the back, train. I would say house that was is the, the easier one. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to tell you why heart isn't. Okay. Take, take Aaron. Okay. Aaron's been working since he was 17. He's been in the cars. He built himself up. Started working on cars here and there, left and right. 30, 10, 10, 12 years later, he's been saving. He's been grinding. He's opened his own garage. Okay. So now, Aaron's now close to 30. Okay. Yeah, now, Follow it. So from 30 to 35, Aaron runs it up. His garage is doing crazy. He, he. Turns itself into a millionaire. Got it. Right? And then some un bad investments, unforeseen consequences. The economy. He gets sick, okay. so he can't work as much. He worked himself up to a millionaire, and he lost everything over the next same period of time, five years. So now Aaron is 40. Okay. Tamika has been with Aaron <coughs> the whole way. Got it. But now, from 40 to 45, he hasn't recaptured that fire. He hasn't regained that light. He hasn't... He's. It's been a rough go, because the only thing worse than losing it, than never having it, is, ha it. is having it and losing it. Yeah. So, Tamika decides, she's out. She's oh. had enough of this. Oh, no. She's like, I'm only 45. I'm still not very attractive, 45, because I've been living a great lifestyle for the last 10 years or so. Um, so, Tamika got with him when he was 30. Once no, he was no, no, no. When no, she was there from young. the 17. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, from 17. Okay. So DJ NB and Gia Gacy. Yeah. Hopefully but she some more slides off on him. Why does nobody cry for Aaron? I would cry for Aaron. That's sad. Like, that. that's the thing. Like, why is it... Why is it assumed... How in a world where 80% of relationships and marriages are terminated by the female, are men viewed as the homewreckers? Okay, that's great, but that still didn't get back to our topic at hand. You've gone on a... I, I was following it, it, you and you... That, 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 that's the whole point. So that's why, not heart, not finances, definitely, but home, because that's the... Not easiest, that's the most quickly remedied if things go south. Got it. Women don't seem to understand that... the. One of the, one of the unforeseen spinoffs of the modern woman 
is the modern man's reluctance to fully commit because you guys leave so frequently. Ooh. Why should I put my everything into a situation where you're going to go left eventually? That's why side chicks are such on the rise. That's why, you know, yeah. girlfriend, you know, screwing around with the assistant is such on the rise is that men understand the stability at home mm -hmm. that that that's one thing and and then you you're going to do what you're going to do but why the only investment in these side women is time and money and money it's not and and, and again those things take away from his main family but it's the easiest thing to give up on you know what I'm saying? Because he would never legitimately pursue this woman. Like, I'm going to leave my wife, even though she's, even though that relationship might not even be that great. But why, I think, again, modern men are nine times out of ten looking at it like you're going to leave anyway. That's why you have these nine, ten year relationships where the man, the man is still kind of either unsure or at that point it's kind of like then what we gotta get married for anyways we've been together for 10 years so that that leads me to okay so it's easier to get into a man's home yes let's say that but by getting to his home do you then not get the chance to now get into his heart and get into his finances like how would a woman now she's in that's, the home that's different, i guess though. the question is how would she turn that into capturing the other two that's the thing, and I think that's why the dating scene is so precarious. I'm going to default back to my original answer. As much as I love you... I'm going to get some other people in here. Go on. As much as I believe we're going to be together forever, I'm why sure do I have to give you the keys? It's hard in these streets. I don't want to be out in these streets. I, why should you... Why should I have to give you anything? You don't keys? have to give me anything. That, that That's the point. So, I think that's kind of where it... Like, Again, it sounds, you have to give me the keys to your heart and home and finances, not the other way around. You have to trust me that wherever I take you will be somewhere that you're good, safe, protected, and provided for. And that's the contract between men and women that is not really being lived up to. By either party, it, it, it seems like. On okay, that, so you know, that, you know, that that's gonna that's gonna rub a lot of women the wrong way. So I, I I want you to go back to that. So it's up to me as a woman to give up my keys to what keys to what my the keys to my finances, everything. the keys to my home, and the keys to my heart everything. before you give up anything. No, I'm not saying I'm not giving up anything. Okay, so clarify that because I clearly wasn't listening. Go on. You are my responsibility. Okay. So that means... Because I think if I if I heard it that way, the other woman would have heard it that way. And I'm sitting right beside you. I'm just kind of like... I, 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 Because you're saying to me, you're I saying... I give you my provision, my protection, and my guidance. Okay. You and give in turn, me your feminist... Your, 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 your feminist... Femininity. Femininity, right. Your support. Okay. And your... The way that women, you know, your... How you represent me. Got it. Okay. All of this love is great. But again, I go back to where it... Our relationship... Love wasn't the driving force. It was absolutely like, not. That it wasn't, and that, and that's not to diminish how I feel about her or how I believe she feels about me. But it wasn't the driver because it's not a good driver of why you should be with someone. I I agree. Take arranged marriages. Then people don't even know each other when they get married. Flash forward twenty years and they are in deep, deep love with each other. How? Um, because they developed it over time. Because respect, leadership, providing, your support, how you represent me, 
those things over time become the currency of the relationship, not your feelings. That's why we got the show. That's fact. So again, for those who are just joining, the question on the table for women was of the three keys. So like keys to a man's heart, his finances or his home, which would you want first? And for the men, it was out of all those three keys, which is easier to give to a woman. And Rob has answered the keys to the house is easier to give because quite frankly, if he needs to put that bitch out, <laughs> basically she can go um, without ripping his heart up and tearing his finances apart. Um, and I get that. So for me to answer the question, which would I want first? The keys to the man's house, his finances or his heart? I would say I don't necessarily want his heart first because I think you can get the other two without getting a man's heart. Um, I would actually want the keys to his finances. And it's not because I'm being a gold digger. It's because I feel like when a man will invest, especially a man of high net worth, when he will invest his money into you, mm -hmm. that says something, right? I don't think he's just going to be willy-nilly. Yes, there's some men who are like... Um, Hey, I'm just going to buy this and buy that. But a lot of the times that money is also an investment of time, right? So that yeah. finances generally comes with time. And to me, a man, you know, when I was back out there in the dating world, a lot of the men that I dated were in the six figure range and I knew that their time was precious. And so by giving me their time, they were in turn actually giving me their finances. They were giving me the access by taking me on the dates and the so forth. So if I had to choose, I would say, because I know the heart can come later mm. right being a good woman and doing all of those things and showcasing the attributes and the characteristics that they're looking for in a wife the heart will come i don't i've never thought that it was easier for a man to give me his heart first i've always figured and i've had men who will give me all of the other stuff mm -hmm. and their heart never ne necessarily came but i got the other stuff and so for me i'm taking the path of least resistance of saying, give me your finances first because I understand over time the others may come. Here, okay. This, I just had a realization a bit while you were going through. And I said, okay, you know how I am about semantics. Are we talking about a key or are we talking about keys? And we're going to turn this into a pretty interesting conversation. Oh, God, you are so about semantics. Well, I gave three keys because they were each, there was three of them. But no, you had to choose there... one. No, 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 no. Three keys. Okay. But is there just one key? Like a master key? So are we talking about, here's the key to my finances. There's one key. Mm-hmm. And I take it and say, here you go. You you take it. No, no, no. He's, okay. not, he was not giving it yeah, to me that's entirely. Why I'm not. He shouldn't give you none of the keys. He should have all the keys. No, he's not giving it to me entirely. But again, are you saying when I, I make a copy? No, Negro. What is wrong with you today? No, I'm just, I'm, you're not making a copy of the key, and it like handed me so you entirely. Have access to it too. I have I have access. I have more access than others. Let's just say I have more access than others. Now the the, Why the would key to the have a key the to key, my heart, home, or finances. Listen, we're in a world of dating, and if I <laughs> I was never stupid enough to think that I was the only one a man was dating, or the only one a man was interested, in, or the only person a man was um yeah, spending time with not, or all yeah, of that all of like, that, yo bro if you got mad keys to your house home and finances running around in these streets you are not very secure well that's that's going to be a problem right and so that's going to be people coming really and going in your house your heart and your home and your finances and you know, you you can't even verify really see i believe more like rfid like you know like they're doing at the complex like you got to swipe your key to get in there. So if some stuff go haywire in there, they like, hey, you was in there at 630. And this is when this thing occurred. You know, I think. I'm so you think you're the giving up the key to one more person. Technical yeah, you're. Then I actually am. But as far as like to access, you know what I mean? Not access. Yeah. The, then giving like you, you have the keys to my heart because you have access to my heart. I still probably would lean more with house because. Like, look at just the modern world. It's a lot of times folks wind up cohabitating out of convenience and not necessarily 
with the intent and conversations and the purposes of moving the moving relationship to the next forward. Level. You know what I'm and saying? I, and it makes sense to me why a man would find it easier to bring a woman into his home than bring her into his heart or his finances. Or like uh, Bad Man Kevo, he can just move out. Who's Bad Man Kevo? Remember the dude, his baby mom was crying at the hotel talking about she was homeless and all this other oh, stuff. Oh, good God, yeah. And yeah, she yeah, was yeah. in front of the like, but he, hotel. You know, he didn't put her out. He was just like, yo, I'm getting my own crib. Love ya. I'm getting my own crib. And when you talk, when he broke down some of the reasons that he arrived at that decision, it was kind of like, because she was slacking on her. She was slacking on her. So let's talk about that. Is, Is that a way, from a man's perspective, letting a woman into your home is a way, it's almost like a testing ground to see whether or not what this woman deserves access says. to the rest of you. Because right? I, again, I, I see how you get down. And you know my saying, like, I'm not a nasty bro at all. But I can't be the cleaner person in the relationship either. Oh, I have OCD. I mean, I was cleaning the hotel room when we that, first... That, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, I wiped down hotel therefore, rooms. Therefore, I'd like, rather deal with that and know my, my home is always going to be <laughs> clean and look representative of the life we're building instead of having you move in and... You drop your clothes at the door, oh, yeah, that, oh. and you do it the next day. So my, my panty the them at the door. Day. Oh, it's oh just no! Clothes everywhere. It's food everywhere. It's dishes everywhere. There's no man that wants to live like that. So that makes sense now, because if you've let a woman into your heart, and you then found out she's a dirty bitch, <laughs> because you then moved her into her, your house, is it harder to get her out of your? It's harder to get her out of your heart than your house. Oh yeah. So now you're dealing with the fact that I love this That's woman, but she's a dirty bitch and That's I can't get her out. emotional terrorism. Remember, it? I coined that phrase. That's when you get people emotionally involved before the real you is revealed. Mm-hmm. So now they got feelings and then all these red flags popping up that you've been kind of... Keeping on the hush. But then I wonder for women if that's almost like in their mind a bit of an okie doke, right? What? Because here's here is certain things that, and again, we're both in our forties, so we'll, I can only talk about you know our age. I don't know about the younger kids, but there are certain things that women felt were a privilege when they were dating a man. Number one, meeting his mama, right? Only certain, like in your mind, only certain people meet your mom, right? So when a woman would say, oh my God, I'm going to go meet Rob's mom. That was, that meant like my my places, I'm getting in there. Okay. Rob has asked me to move in. Yeah. Like we're moving towards a future. But if a man is thinking like, you know, like bitch, this is just a testing ground to see whether or not I should even keep you in my space to see how you're going to operate a lot of women might be like what the hell because again you've you know done the two things that for women it's like the highest things to do introduce me to your mama and your friends and family and kind of brought me into that circle and then asked me to move into your house here here, here, yeah and i think that's the thing and i wish we that conversation with that woman on his on mr samuel's show went longer the married woman actually because i would have liked to know more about their backstory because how she explained it was as they were talking about the future and stuff she became she was she found herself in a space of I'm going to hitch my wagon to this man. And we've talked about that. I have a clip you, actually where I say I've hitched my wagon to you. <laughs> not. You hitched the wagon to my 6'9". Or no, I rang it to all of you. He got a third you. leg. Or he got a million dollars. Or all of those other stupid things that a man can have low character, low integrity, low discipline, and be high in those superficial. I have a hell of an Instagram following. And you dummies fall for him and then be like, ain't no good men. But meanwhile, Steady Eddie been working as a sanitation worker for 20 damn years and you don't want to give him no attention. But that man character is to the roof. That is interesting. You that show really got to you. It today. did, because I'm tired of you <laughs> like, the same I stuff. I might have to you know, like, like uh keep you off Kevin Samuels for a little bit because that show got to it you. It did, man. It, it really bothered me a little bit because you know, I I like to consider I know my privilege. Mm-hmm. No, no, you won the genetic lottery in so many different privilege. ways. Um, but I respect my brothers deeply. 
My guys, they do it, they handle their job, they take the title of being a man seriously, they try to make their way in this world, and they do the best that they can with the hands that they was dealt. I got nothing but respect for them guys. So the fact that that guy is having such a hard time getting respect from women because they all focused on the top 10% of them or dudes that have qualities that I kind of just got in genetic lottery. But the stuff on my resume, I actually had to work for. Mm -hmm. But it's a lot of guys that done got by with just the genetic lottery. And many of you have many children by these guys. That's fine. I mean, let me not get it. And he has no other accomplishments behind he's sexy. Well, so going back to men, would that be an easier way for men to sort out women is to give them the keys to their house first than their heart or finances. Mm, yeah. Cause again, to me, those are the three top things that make a relationship, right? Living together, having your heart and having access or at least, um, some say in the finances, right? Like, I don't necessarily have your bank card waving around going and tapping everywhere, but I have some say in how our finances are divvied and I do have like my own card and like different things that have, but like I have, I do have some say in that. So for, for you, you're like, listen, maybe have her move in first, bro, mm -hmm. and see even what kind of woman she is on a 24 seven basis. But Again, now I'm saying for some women, that's the okie doke. So should there be a conversation when you're almost saying, yo, this is a trial run? <laughs> like, I, I would, this is going to sound jacked up, but I would almost say it is an okie doke. And here's why. Okie doke. And this is going to sound jacked up again, but this is kind of why historically marriage has been so important. Did we move in and then start talking about our future together? Oh, no. We talked about our future together and then we moved in. Did you get access to my finances before we talked about our future together? No, or... I got it after. Okay. <laughs> Did you get access to my heart before we talked about our future? No, I got it after. So to move in and still be talking about your future... Makes me feel kind of like you already know it. Oh. This is as far as you go, honey. So enjoy the ride while you're on it. Men don't really think like that. Like what? Get, let, let the ladies know. I am curious. Men don't really think like what exactly? Let me lean in for this. Let's one. talk about previously. Men don't like to lose swinging on the chandelier. Okay. He'd rather remove you in than lose you. Okay. Why did it stop at move in? Why didn't he propose? Why isn't he planning a future with you involving a marriage? Why? And again, there's, there, there's an importance behind that. You know what I'm saying? Why, when there was pressure about where's the relationship going, was the answer move in? So now you got another five years of just live cohabitation? Look, I'm pretty sure that Jay-Z knew immediately what type of life he wanted with Beyonce. Mm -hmm. But he had to, he understood the difficulty in attaining that. Mm -hmm. And he had to make sure that she was there for him, not for Jay-Z. Oh, for Sean Carter. She wants to be Mrs. Yo, Carter, not Mrs. Jay-Z. So Jay -Z. many women, especially y'all exposing yourself so bad right now. It's literally... Y'all have made men feel like y'all only care about us from the perspective of the lifestyle we can provide for you. Like, just put a face with a question mark up there, six-figure earner, brr, 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 brr. you know what I'm saying? The man is actually interchangeable. Mm -hmm. When you ask the average woman these days, what are the things that are most important to her, half of them at least are superficial 
qualities. Ooh. Men are not superficial creatures. Y'all are. Oh, no. Okay. Y'all are beauty. We're beasts. Oh, no, that's what I had that title for that Instagram I never use. You don't hey. judge a beast on how cute he is. <laughs> you don't judge a beast on how cute he is. That is facts, babe. That is fact. So, again, our sponsor is coming through that a lot of men do it to shut the woman up. Ask her to move in to shut her up. Yeah, it's not a, it's a band-aid. And why? Why not just leave the relationship? Why, if the woman has the where are we going conversation, do you not just be like, yo, well, hey, this really is not going anywhere? Because I don't want to lose the pom pom. Men are reluctant to give up coochie unless it's toxic and bad. And even then, we've heard, we see the stories on YouTube all the time of men that lost, literally have lost their lives because they just couldn't leave her alone. So there is this idea for women that you can just go and find new pom pom. Like, if why why put me in a in a place <laughs> also on stage because he's getting the good stuff? Why put me in a position and you in a position where we're cohabitating without any prospect of a future? Or why not just go find new pom pom? Because I can still go get new pom pom. One, I didn't say that that was off limits. Oh, Two, to move you in, all I got to do is we've had the conversation. Do what I'm supposed to be doing anyways, which is pay the rent. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, your lifestyle really doesn't change. It, There's an like extra it, it, mouth to feed, maybe, but, but very yeah, likely it, it, she's like, buying the groceries or whatever. I have to do this anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So, what, what uh, again, women should kind of know this. How many relationships is, have it been where she's asked him to move in with her? Yes. If there's not a larger red flag, I don't know what is. Well, Sorlin said that he ain't got to work for old Pum Pum. <laughs> no, you ain't got to start dating. You ain't got to do nothing. But just bring... Oh, go ahead and move in. Here, Rocky. Okay. There's... Because there's a courting phase. Well, nowadays, yeah, who knows? No, I don't two know what's to four hundred dollars per day. Uh, but With there's a courting phase before, before the Pum Pum. And then it may not be good Pum Pum. So I guess if you got half decent Pum Pum... You're just like, this is what we're going to do. So, Sorrel instead says, new pum pum requires energy and time and might not pay off. The old faithful pum pum is already there, which is basically and what again, I'm just saying. And women are not paying attention to the stats. Y'all got the game skewed up. Y'all are chasing the top 20% of men. So, the other 80% of dudes, y'all wonder why he leading you on and stuff like that. Oh. Damn. Why? Why he's a little reluctant to just say she's for the streets. Oh. You can be for the streets, but as long as I got access. Um, I'm just going to have If y'all are chasing just the top, if, if a group of 10 dudes, all y'all want to fuck two of them, what the, other, what the other eight dudes supposed to do? It's 10 women. It's 10 on 10. But still, all of y'all want the same couple of guys. So you think that the other 80% is actually the finessers? No, they're just the steady eddies. They got to do what they're doing regardless. And if they actually happen to land one of you and then you start to go left, why should he push you out the door? Why shouldn't he just let you leave? Got it. So, oh my God. So this leads me to, uh, so would men we rather women just feelings. leave? He doesn't want to tell you. You can live here for 10 more years, but we ain't getting married. So, so men would rather women just get fed up and leave. Yes, then break up with you. Wow, that's interesting, huh? Because again, once we feel you've become disingenuous in the relationship, we don't care as much anymore. Huh? So that leads me to because you ask some great that. questions, right? Like we didn't get here and move in together before we were talking about our future and access to your finances and access to your heart. All Again, was, our relationship... We had a plan before we did any of yeah, that Yeah, our relationship transpired very quickly in, in, in the grand scheme of things. Sometimes. And I think that people get confused because it was like we met and then we were kind of together. But there was a lot... There were hours and hours upon conversations and thousands of text messages in those times of really 
uh, like we were just so open and honest and where we wanted to go and peeling back the layers and there were six hour conversations and again it was COVID so there was a lot of things like we packed in you know if we think about the last almost two years of being together we packed in about five that's years in that relationship. Where the statement of everything you need to figure out about this man, you need to figure out before you start busting him down. Mm-hmm. You did point. that. I did know all the things I need to know before you got access to That's my phone. That's why you were able to jump off the plane and like, where are we at? And I was right <laughs> on in. She felt like she had addressed the questions that she needed. But again, she wasn't pressing. I was not working. My net worth was zero. Like, those things, I'm a pass. Mm-hmm. But because you did diligence and started digging, it's like, damn, this dude got... No, I, I dug. He's got some Like, I, I dug. I dug. He's got I some dug. skills. He's done some things. He's I didn't just leave it at certain things. I would go, okay, what, say, where, why, why did you saying. get to this place? What made you make that decision? Okay. And then what made you make that decision? Okay. What, what led to that? Okay. And we got into these, these and conversations. And you were more attracted to me... The man than my resume, even though my resume was actually yeah. solid. Because I talk about that, right? I had to see you in your totality, right? It wasn't a fraction. You were going through a fraction of 43 years at that time, right? right? Like 44, whatever you were at that time, right? You were going through just a fraction of that part of your life, right? It was an indicative of the overall man that you were. And I saw you for the overall man that you are, but you are right. There are some women who it's insert men here because they're seeing the men for just what he brings them, the life he can give them and not the man, his character. Like he could have flawed character, but they do not care. I turn. Oh, yeah. I turn is a terrible human being. <laughs> he's a terrible human being, but he's got some, he's got some bread. So Sorrel and Sage says you took a chance and it paid off based on your odds. I did, girl. Not every dude has Robles odds. He, they do not, girl. I would agree with that. I <laughs> would agree not. with that. However, what Rob said is correct. I didn't just go. Oh, I mean, and one day we'll sit and probably tell the entire story of because I'm not putting that much in the book, but I think one day we'll have a show where we go through the entirety of what the relationship is. But I think. This is where I said where I'm responsible and accountable for the decision and the choices that I made. And I made the choice to, when he was telling me about his current situation, I chose not to let that define him. And I started undigging and asking questions and he was open. And I and think I that was a decision. With my current situation. Yeah, and so that was a decision. That's to see what kind of, what you want. Yeah, and I didn't, because I, you know, I was looking at some of our old messages because it's part of the book. And if you didn't care to get to actually know me The man, I had no interest. And that would make sense. And so I think a lot of women are playing their cards too early. Look, y'all are out there trolling for the bag. We're out here trolling for poom poom. So, Sorrel and Sage, she said a couple of things and we're going to get to that. Women fall in love with potential all the time, but you can't hang your heart on potential. Some dudes are ding-dongs and we need to make the choice to walk away from ding-dongs. And I love how she said, we as women need to make the choice to walk away. I think also what you said, one of my favorite quotes, Bill Parcells, go Giants, potential ain't nothing but shit you ain't done yet. Yes, I had potential, but I also had accomplishments to back that potential. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. It it was like she caught me mid-journey. It wasn't like I was just leaving the station. You you feel what I'm saying? So that 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 kind of uniqueness. But usually you don't see a lot of uh, uh, steam engines just break down in the middle of the track either. That that was kind of my circumstances. And, and no, you and, were resetting and, to and me. I always saw it as a on. no. I always saw where you were at as a reset. Right? You had front loaded your life quite a bit. Right? Your yeah. life was front loaded. Yeah. Um. And now you were trying to figure out what the next twenty to thirty years in your life would likely look like. And I think you need to stop. Like, again, you, you know, as I started to learn your story and everything that came with it from your upbringing to going to university to going overseas and playing ball to coming back and the decisions you make and getting your MBA and like all of those things. I was like, oh my God, like he front, like all of this happened before before you were 30. Right. 
right? Like spending seven years overseas, going to school for free, like getting your MBA, all of these different things. Then I found out you didn't even have kids until you got married. And I was like, oh my God, I'm like fucking unicorn, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> right? And so it was all of those things. But I always appreciated that you led with what was supposed to be the bad. And I went, I kind of swatted it out of the way. I was like, okay, tell me more. And I like, I'm going to respond to Cast Forever Rising real quick. Yes, but it was still a gamble. Ladies, it's always a gamble. It's always a gamble. Life is a casino. Yeah. If it, if aces won all the time, then only the very best of us would achieve anything. But that's not the case. Like, you see people with nothing rise to great success. You see people born with everything Music. amount to nothing. Yeah. It's always a gamble. But in our relationship every day is a gamble. Like, I mean, we, you know, again, we're, we can't tell everything that's going on with us right now. But every day has been a gamble. The last 18 months, everything has been a gamble. We've had to rebuild everything. And it was both of us going in and saying, we're going to go hard in the paint at this yeah. point. We're going, you know what? We need to step back at this point. Okay, you know what, babe? Let's go hard in the paint again. And we're going to give everything we have. And mm, things aren't working out, but we're not going to give up because this, that, and the next thing. Life is a gamble. And like I said, I don't, I can't guarantee that you make it to the top of the mountain because we have very big dreams about where we're going. Yeah, and you don't do. go, eh, I think I want to trade you in. That's a chance I take. Or you, I might say, you know what, I'm getting off this ride because I met such and such in your circle and they make three times as much as you. So I'm out. I like, want you more. I'm gone. Want <laughs> right? It's like, wants me a million dollars, babe. Right? Like, exactly. You only making 250, babe. But that million dollar man over there that's been courting me I behind your back for a year, right? Like, we run a risk in everything. And so the only thing that I can deal with and be accountable is for the decisions. Every decision I've made to be beside you sitting here every single week on Thursday and you have to do the same. But this is a gamble. Like relationships are a crapshoot. And this is why I was saying like, which one do you want first and which one's easier to get? Because there is no guarantee you get all three of them. And that's where I wanted to get in the last part of this because there is no guarantee mm -mm. that you get the finances, the house and the heart. And I'm going to read something. Um, I'm going to find something that somebody no said. Do you mind, it, no do you mind reading it. these comments, babe? Um, sure. What Sorlin said, said from Sorry. openness. Openness is important and the hard questions matter. We're trolling for ding-dongs. <laughs> uh, yes. Rob had the back of tears. <laughs> and then Cass said it was a gamble again. And the odds were in her favor. Sorlin Sage responded, women take risks. On surefire losers all the time and expect a, a windfall. windfall. Fact. No argument That's fact. here. Hence my comments sometimes. You obviously ain't asked no dudes about that dude. Because like some sometimes it is that bad. Like again, think of like this doesn't like again, we moved around, we're we we don't we're not in the town that we grew up in. So, no. But take, you know, Charleston, West Virginia. You know what I'm saying? If your baby dad been a loser his whole life, do you think the president of the bank gonna mess with you? No. And that y'all all from Charleston? No, yeah, they know about your reputation in Charleston. So when Kevin Samuel say you can't rise higher than your baby daddy, like I that that's there's a fit unless you're really in demand, really attractive. But because men look at that. So Cal said it was a gamble that paid off. He could have been fronting. And you're absolutely right. She was responding to you. And then uh, Sorlin Sage responded to Cast Forever Rising. Yes, you losers front all the time when we gamble on them. We also ignore red flags. Sometimes we see only what we want. And hanging our hearts on potential is something that women constantly, um, I'm assuming she was doing. And then Cal said, I've learned that talk without action usually means nothing. Not everyone has integrity. Ring, ring, ring. Oh, and then Sorlin Sage's potential and integrity are definitely two different animals. Ring, ring, ring. <laughs> I'm done with you. So one of our viewers, she isn't on right now, but she'd reached out to me and responded to the question that I had posed. And again, the question is, ladies, which key do you want first from a man? And so she said, ooh, this is a good question. I want to say a combination of heart and finances. The house I had for one year tried to get the heart and did not succeed. And the finances, well, I aim to get better. So that's the thing is you may not get all of them. 
and which if you had to choose two which ones are you willing to get because again especially with these women who want a six-figure man as if a six-figure man is easy to come by six-figure men are not easy to come by seven-figure men clearly are harder to come by but i guess in today's social media world and what people are seeing and the fronting because didn't what's the little white kid with the colored hair that six nine is that him Mm -hmm. that he was fronting on the gram or something and then he said it was fake money mm -hmm. like he actually had fake money i don't mm -hmm. ask me why i know that it's research for not beautiful girl talk anyways mm -hmm. i was like some people like the illusion of what a life could be oh my god that's the life i could be living everybody's living like that like that young lady on kevin samuels who was from miami who said oh yeah most millionaires are made by the time they're 30 and i was like bitch where or like Instagram, when you see people in front of the Bentley or the Rolls Royce in a, That's parking, not theirs. Lot, in a parking lot. That's not theirs. Not in front of the crib. Not at the dealership getting Not in the front key. of the dude's crib that you crashing at, even. <laughs> but in the parking lot. Like you were walking in, oh, a Bentley, and now, took a picture in front of it. Before the owner that came That is out. the corniest shit, and I'm sorry if that offends. No, but that's fact, because it, it goes back to what Sorrel and Sage said ignoring red flags and also not digging deeper yeah. and i think that's what we did for both of us because of course he had to you had to find out things about me to make sure that is she am i going to be doing exactly what i did in the past with yeah. the two previous women i was with in my adulthood yeah. right like am i just am i ignoring certain things about her and so yeah you dug with me too to find out certain things to you know you throwing your present situation out as opposed to your former situation or where you want it to be was a test and then when i passed that test then there was another test that i had to pass okay, and another speaking test of that front, I had to pass. if i was still representing like yeah you know like people like dudes ask me to lie about my sports background all what the what do you mean lie time. i'm so confused what do you mean lie? say you play for the sun Say oh. you just retired. Say you do, do, do. Because women will hang on that stupidness by catnip from the perspective of even my boy we'll can get, get smashed thinking that I'm DeAndre Ayton or somebody. That is pathetic. <laughs> it's pathetic. Yeah, you don't lead with basketball at all. Usually, no, I, I am the one who says something because you get you know get the people in the stores like, oh my god. Um, and then Rob pretends like he's never, he's like, yeah, I used to play a little bit, little pickup. And I was like, dude, like even putting on your resume was like, it was hard to get you to agree. And I was like, it matters. And yeah, we now know what matters. Spent all my day talking to ding dongs. <laughs> <laughs> but what's so funny, you're so right, is on both parties, on both ends, to even get the keys to any of those things, you have to do the work. And the work is uncovering and knowing the right questions to ask and actually asking that. Because I think sometimes the issue is we know the questions to ask. We don't want to ask them because we don't want to push that other person away. But if asking certain questions is going to push them away, what's the point? And it was funny because you said on the show last week, it was either last week or the week before, when you're saying, if you want to know something about a man, ask him the most uncomfortable questions that you can find. Like, when am I going to meet your mama? When am I going to see your house? When are you going to take me to your office? To find out what his intentions. Yes, I think it was last week when you said you have to know the difference between a man's attention and his intention. Yes. And I think there are a lot of us as women who would rather get the attention than find out the man's intention because that might push him away and we want yeah. him to stay. Wait, no, I, I agree with you on that, but I also think that y'all sometimes like to lie to yourselves. And here's why I say that. Y'all say you want the truth. I remember I had to come in, I was like, men don't, we, he told you the truth once, you flipped out on him for it, and he said, okay, I'll just lie to you from here on out. You know what I'm saying? And y'all would rather be cool with that. Here's the reason why. Women that ask questions, get an answer that they don't like, and a woman would rather, okay, let me back up. A woman would rather ask, or not ask the question, than ask the question and get an answer she doesn't like, because she know the answer doesn't really put him under pressure to do anything. It puts her under pressure. Elaborate on that. Are you cheating? 
What if he was? What if he said, you know what? I'm gonna just tell the truth. Yeah, I got, I got a side chick. So then she's got to decide. Now, if she if stays. Or he leaves. doesn't. It doesn't put him under any pressure. Because he's like, the I'm truth good. doesn't put him under any pressure. It puts you under pressure because you got to figure out what you're gonna do about it. Well, you're passionate about that. You're passionate tonight. I'm going to have to, like, cut off your Kevin Samuels view for a couple of days because, good God. Um, but you're right. And I think women don't think about it that way. The truth actually puts me in a, in a place where I may have to have a difficult decision to make. And I'm not necessarily ready to make that difficult decision because usually when you're asking if he's cheating, it's because you already have done some digging, to think he's cheating. Like, I am not going to ask you if you... Like, that's never a question that I think is going to come up in our relationship. Are you cheating on me? Who's because I, yeah, I have access to your life. Right? Like, I, I can get in his phone right now. Usually when, right now, when Rob is in... When Rob is, you know, we're out on a belt on the street. my His phone is in my purse. And I've seen guys look at it when he's like, Babe, my phone. And I take it out. And I'll put the passcode in and hand it to him. Guys are like, what in the fuck is going on? And she's just lame. like... Like they might think you're whatever. He's lame, right? But I don't, I don't ask those questions because I don't have those concerns. Usually, it's coming from a place of concern, and you've probably validated your concerns by doing some intel, and now you just want him to come clean. But again, you understand that coming clean will mean that he'll have to, you'll have to make a tough decision. I'm going to stay with him, knowing he's a cheater, or cheating on me, because it doesn't mean he's a cheater. It means he's cheating on you. Or do I stay? Do I stay? Do I go? What do I do? What are you going to do about it? That's true. So Cass is saying, she says, um, I don't care. I ask what I want to know. I watch how he responds. And I guess she was saying bye to the cheating. Uh -huh. Comes down to knowing what you want and need. Mm -hmm. And listen, there is no shame in staying in a relationship when a man is cheating on you. I'm the, the product. Thing. I'm a product of a whole affair. So, like, you thing. know, my childhood has clearly left an impression on me in terms of my lifestyle and the choices that I make. Because I think my daddy's still a great man. You know, he's flawed, <laughs> right? He's a great daddy. He's a flawed man. But everybody's flawed. My mama was flawed. Everybody. My mama slept Thank with you. him knowing, well... I think she found out later, but whatever it is, right? Like it was all a situation, right? We're all flawed. And therefore, who am I to look at your flaws and put them out for everybody to see, but act as if my flaws are nothing for you to deal with. So I think we have to understand that, but you're right. You know, you don't ask questions you don't want um, the answers to. So if you don't trust and you don't need proof, you just leave. Um, don't ask questions to which you do not want the answers. I always say that all the time. If I really don't want the answer to this question, I'm not just going to ask. And sometimes ignorance is bliss. There are a lot of women living in an ignorant state and they're as happy as happy can be because they're like, I'm not going to mess up my happiness for something that if I really think about it is knowing going to make me leave. I have to be honest with you. If I thought you were cheating on me, Knowing isn't going to make me leave. Not knowing isn't going to... I'm just not... I'm not leaving. So what's the point of me knowing and confirming it? Because my decision is likely going to be that I'm not going to leave. So I'm just going to live in the ignorant bliss of the life we're having and everything that we're doing and all of that. Because I'm just... I'm not going to leave. Knowing that you're cheating on me, you being like, yeah, babe. Yeah. You want to meet her? Like, that's the type of man you... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You are... How does that help me? Because it breaks the reality of the life that I've built. But that's just me. Um, everybody works different. Yeah, I like that quote. A relationship without trust is toxic. Yes. If you don't trust that man, why aren't you leaving him? What do you think? You're going to start trusting him again? You think he's going to earn your trust back? Or maybe you should have never trusted him in the first place. Oh. I'm like matrixing. See my matrix moves? <laughs> I'm just saying. So, Sorla Safe says, Shiva, we were raised differently and agree with you in terms of cheating. And Cass says we are imperfectly perfect. Um, is he involved or is he just getting a nut? Now, that is actually a really good question. Okay. Ooh, can I touch on that for Yes, babe. Okay. Let me grab our question. Why? Oh, my Lord. Okay. I probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> Oh, 
If you're, this is going to sound crass as hell, I'm sorry, but it's got to come out like this. If your true desire is to be a wife, how can a nigga fuck on you just to get a nut? And I'm sorry about saying nigga. Um, elaborate. How can a man get that coochie just to satisfy his sexual needs? Like, the woman who is getting hers is not complaining about relationships, y'all. No, it's the women that are using sex to try to influence relationships that are complaining the most. Because we don't settle down for good snatch. Sorry. I mean, we did. you did talk about that a bit last week when we talked about freaky sex. Like, That's again, not when enough. You, when you talked about super head is, you know, super, super clean toilet. And <laughs> yeah, super clean bathroom. Super clean bathroom and super good credit. Like, and, and I think that's, this is where men and women may not know each other as well. Because there are many women who do think that. Like, the first thing they think when they hear or think that their man is cheating on me is, she better not be uglier, or I wonder if she's more good looking, or I wonder if the sex is better, and I wonder She that. ain't doing it like I do it. And she's not thinking, okay, she's just why? Not and not asking the question, why would he step out on, on me? Have I given him a reason not to step out on me? Have I given him a reason to step out on me? It's always the deflection of the other person. Perfect example. I show you watch where old girl was winning. She was doing pretty good, but she was leading with sex the whole mm -hmm, way, whole mm -hmm. way, whole way. Ready to whole love. Way. Yep. Got confronted with some realness, then that true character spilled out. Yeah. Yeah. Because if your true character is like yours, why do you got to leave with sex? Yeah, I try not to. Because these are going to, well, they're fake. That, 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 that's what I'm saying. I'm very like this. But, you know. If your personality is bomb, why you lead in with the bomb poom poom? Mm, say it again. If your personality is bomb, why you lead in with the bomb poom poom? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why? Why you pull out the ten when you got a hundred in the other hand? Oh my god, so sort of stage says true, but if he ain't getting his, he's gonna get it elsewhere. But isn't part of No no no, that's not the question. If he had, what is him, him getting his got to do with what you trying to do? Hmm. Elaborate some more. Back to the point of get to know everything you need to know about this dude before you let him chop. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel you. <laughs> you got to go to but what if you ain't got no personality or no cannons? So, just for the clip I'll be using for those of us without Shiva's cannons, we got to go Route. <laughs> my <laughs> Here's the thing. I actually do lead with my personality. I do not lead, even though they're very, very much there on display. I actually, because I think you fell in love with my personality before you, again, because you didn't, like, you didn't, you saw pictures of me, right? And you saw all of that. that. And like, he was kind of like, I still don't know what's showing yeah, up. I don't, I don't trust none of that. Like, I don't. We video called. We did a. I mean, yeah, we did yeah, a lot I, of verification. Yeah, but I, I still don't. There's nothing like actually. You know, you could have looked exactly how you look and smelled like mothballs, and that could have been <laughs> like something I couldn't psychologically get over. I took like, off my my you clothes and like had a cat lady, and it's not like your you no, know, it's your your pheromones to me. That's hilarious. You know what I mean? I took off my clothes and had like a bullet wound or something. <laughs> Like a staff wound. Ah. Or like, you know, just a big hump missing or something like that. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> Swallowed some bleach when I was a kid. Yeah. Robert. Yeah, anyway, Sorlin says, yeah. says, if she don't have any of the bow, she's SOL, which for people is shit out of luck. Basically. But, but I love what you said. That wet, wet, that bomb, bomb, no, but I love what you said. It is important to get to, it's like front load your relationship instead of back loading it. Right? We front load it. 
Yeah. Like that's kind of how you had front loaded your life and your career and your experiences. Mm-hmm. It helped you because front loading and putting all of our stuff out here has led us to where we are yeah, right now. That's my natural tendency, though. Is yeah, I'm put gonna, out all the 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 not so great stuff, or just get more done early because you ain't gonna have the energy to do it later. So, ladies, that's some good advice. Um, and you said it last week and you said it this week. Front load. Put that man under pressure. Rob has said it. Find out everything that you need to well, know. Well, they don't really want to do that because they got it in their head already. that he They like him and he's tall and he's, he makes six figures and he's got the third leg and he drives the hurricane. And, yeah, you, you don't want to push him under that type of pressure because then he'd be like, he could choose somebody else. I'm just here to chop. I'm just saying. And then it's like, oh, now, again, now I got to make a decision. Do I just let this man chop? And a lot of y'all honestly will, thinking that, okay, I'm going to give him some of this good good, and then he's going to want more. Nope. He just wanted to chop. He's going to keep wanting to chop. But why take it to the next level? But, again, this is where the accountability and responsibility and choices come in, right? Like, I ask the tough questions. There was a moment I was going to walk away from you because of a previous situation you had. And I'm like, I'm not quite sure if you're ready to get into something else. So, dude, I think you need to go deal with whatever and go figure yeah. that situation out. And you were like, situation figured out. Like, woman, I'm not letting you go. Like, yeah, what are you talking about? Too, it's just like, are you don't tell me how to think. Or are you don't tell me what I'm, what I'm dealt with. Or what I've I'm never knew that. With. Like, you know, all of that. Like, yeah, it does. It's kind of like, no, you know, you face it in similar, especially, you know. Like I said, we don't share everything with you, but there's a particular situation that she's 5% more sensitive than others, and just be fair. And, like, I'm, anytime you feel... I'm trying to figure out what situation that is. No, go on. Anyway. <laughs> What's any, work to me? What situation are you talking about? The situation you were just talking about. Oh, that situation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So again, anytime you have any feelings about that, it kind of pisses me off and offends me because I feel they're unjustified. Got it. Got it. I get it. You know. So again, but from your perspective, I'm they're understandable. So I deal with it. You know what I mean. But and if you could, we could, you know, spot my mail. You wouldn't worry about it at all. I get that. But again, I was I was okay with. Asking the tough questions yeah. and being okay with walking away if they didn't go with what I wanted out of a relationship. So we're going to um, do so and say just comment and then we're going to go to the question bowl. Yeah. Being real from jump is a scary because we fear rejection and getting hurt. But truth comes out sooner or later and the hurt and rejection are going to happen anyways. Rob, come back in the frame. <laughs> And what you said, it's going to happen anyway. So, you, you are you serious? And I, don't, I know you're already on there. But women, th- that fear, you cannot win playing not to lose. Ooh. That's, that's a sports analogy for y'all. But straight, there's not a single athlete in the world that will tell you, well, that won't tell you. When you play not to lose, you're pretty much guaranteeing that outcome. You got to play this guy at life to win. That was mic drop. That was great. So does it? I'm. I would think it hurts more after two or three years and two or three kids than it does after two or three dates or two or three weeks. Same mm-hmm. outcome. Um, I don't really have. This is when I do this, and it's time for a question right, ball because he question done dropped time. the mic, and we got a couple of minutes to get through this. Okay, sir, what is your first question? Oh, buddy, if you could only eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? Fire pot. We just do it every day. So Fire Pie is a pizza place out here that's actually really, really good, and they make like. Custom pizzas with all the toppings, all the veggies. So I have a different pizza every day, technically. Really? Why not? I thought you would have gone for something more extravagant. I don't want to eat steak every day or lobster or seafood, but like again, that gives me some variety. Yeah, I guess you could throw some steak and. But it's still pizza. You can put steak and shrimp and lobster and whatever else I want on there. Okay. Um, What's a new hobby you'd like to try? Interesting. What's a new hobby I'd like to try? I don't know if it's a hobby, but I definitely, um, 
want to start learning additional languages. I think That's cool. as I as as we plan out our life, I know traveling is going to be coming a part of it, at least in the next, I'd say, three to five years. Once we've established some things, we want to get going. And so making sure that I understand a variety of languages. So and learning the, languages. That's the other thing. Like America, come on with the superiority thing sometimes. Y'all realize the rest of the world speaks two, three languages mm-hmm. on average. That's true. But we speak one here, and we always love to say, learn to speak. If you're in America, learn to speak English. The funniest thing in this world is a traveler. I've been in foreign countries where Americans still saying the same dumb shit. You don't speak any English? <laughs> in the people them countries. In the people in them countries. Exactly. Oh, my goodness. You don't speak English? <laughs> what's your favorite? What per- I- what's your favorite personality trait of your own? Resiliency. You definitely are resilient. I will give you that. That you have no argument from me. What do you think? And I'm just follow up question. What do you think contributes to your resiliency? Hard ass life. It's a hard knock life for us. Okay, and he'll talk about it more in his book, No Guidance, coming out. We don't know when, but it will come out eventually. Okay. Um, as a teenager, did you ever rebel against your parents? No. I wasn't a rebeller. I, I, I kind of wish I was because my mother still beat me at Samoa. My mother, <laughs> like, I actually wish I got justified beatings. Oh, Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, I really, really wish I had got been a, a rebel so that the, some of these beatings I was getting and slap up was justified. But I was definitely not a rebel. I did the right things. I was an honor roll student all throughout high school. I had uh, a boyfriend who I met my mother. Like, I did the whole introduction. He was a nice young man. We dated for two and a half years. Like, I did. I, I got a job. I was helping my mother pay bills. And I was still get. Anywho, I do like our sponsor's comment. I love that Rob's path was coming along nicely. <laughs> so one more question each. I'll just give you your question, and then we'll wrap up. Okay. This is me. This is you. Where do you want to be living in 10 years? Ooh, that's an excellent question. That is a good question. So after 10 years, if we're in the U.S., I'd say Texas possibly or maybe we got California money um outside the country that shit down there anywhere like we're both kind of feel like this ship is headed in the wrong direction <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're trying to jump off the American so, train yeah we're looking for some other uh places to call home eventually and I've been saying that since I was 20 something I knew I did not want to retire in America once I started traveling abroad you realize America, there's, there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat. Oh, we're definitely like having North a, Africa is dope. Oh, yeah, we're definitely having a housing in Jamaica. Um, exactly. With you know, I you know, listen. That humidity, she's all about it, but I'm like, ooh, that's Yeah, humidity. he's not big on humidity, you know? but all I want to be doing is shaking my ass on a boat in Bali, even my 40, But if we can afford one of them ass. houses where you, like, literally step off your porch into the ocean, like, we might be able to do something like that. Yeah, and get that big money. Get that big money, baby. Um, <laughs> we working on it. We, we working, working on it. it. Um, so, what's your greatest talent? Um, I think it's listening. And um, I will clarify. Listening to understand, not listening to respond. I would say that I'm... A, Fairly good listener, yes, and I think that's unless a, you're triggered, and then you ain't hearing much of nothing. Okay. But yes, you are an excellent listener. So I would also add a communicator. I would think that allow being able to listen also makes me a fairly effective communicator. Are you doing a discount, my No, it's not job? a discount, but I think. I can toot my own horn. I feel like I kind of pressed you to have to be a good communicator. Oh, Jesus, Father. <laughs> so mean, I'm a good communicator skill, because of Robert. No, but in this relationship, you don't have to hold anything back. It's I not do even not. acceptable to hold stuff back. I do not. However, I did gr- get a... <laughs> and her sponsor knows me very well. Sheba, your greatest talent is your ability to develop bullshit. That's a good one to ah, like a too. fucking canine. <laughs> I do. I do actually do. Because I'll be like, hmm. 
You know why that is? Because I ask the questions. Right, follow up question. I think I'm a follow up question person. I just don't take things at face value. And it's not about a distrust. It's just that I was always an inquisitive thing. And it was something my father nurtured in me. He was always like, listen, baby girl, if you don't ask questions, how are you going to get answers? And so I always, you know, I do that with you all the time. And we, you know, we're lucky we're in this relationship where the what if game is such an exciting game for us because we get to, you know, peel back the layers. But there are a lot of people who growing up, they're like, yeah, Fossey, because in Jamaica, inquisitiveness for some people is not because it was like, now you had to answer my questions. Well, I'm yeah, like, where are you from? And that's, that's kind of the drawback of the social media era is that most people pretty much their whole persona is bullshit. Yeah, it's you fake. know what I'm saying? Like you if you ask the average modern person today, how much of what you believe is because you actually believe it? Ooh. Ooh. They couldn't even really tell you. Ooh. I can tell you with certainty, most of what I believe, I actually believe you can't press me into changing my view on it my position on it my that's fast platform some things i try and i'm just like i right, hands up he's firm in that's this what I'm i believe just gonna, like, that's what beliefs are are double-edged sword yeah it's not a smoke screen and i think a lot of people's life are a smoke screen yeah, 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 right yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a big smoke that's screen. why i said so follow-up questions just alleviate like you know uh i'm the best lover in the world why Okay, who told you? Who that? told you this? Can when I was speak the last to the time you heard yeah. that? <laughs> like, can I speak to the people like, who told again, you that? And, and the answer to that usually your person is blah, 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 by that point. But I'm, I was always one of because I think it's also the only child thing, and you yeah, know our sponsor is an only child. Yeah, that's um, why we all get along so Exactly, it. you're an only child, and it's one of those things is only children. And again, I have siblings. Well, we both have siblings. Child. Yeah, I'm my mother's only child. We both have siblings from our father. But one of the great things about only children is that time you kind of spend alone in your head. And you, funny enough, people think it's a bad thing, but it's not. You get these things where you, you, you want to know things from other people and you start asking questions, especially people who had siblings and who had larger families and you'd want to find out things that happened with them. And so I honed my questioning skills no, by questioning other people. Those you made me think about that, like, um, that show Danny loves to watch. Like, I'm pretty sure old girl, what's her name? What show though? The host. Nailed it. Nailed it. Yes. What's the host? Nicole. I'm pretty sure she's an only child. She's just way too comfortable acting like it in front of other people. Yeah. Like a lot of her humor and stuff, you can tell that stuff she was just doing. She was amusing herself. Yeah. Like I'm very comfortable with my own company. Yeah, so like, am I. And so is she. And so is <laughs> Joanne. That's like, why we're all great. Like there, there's less pretense because I don't care if you don't like me or not. I like you by myself. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> like, so yeah, I think, that, I think that allowed me. And that is the part too. Like, I don't, I don't fear rejection because I'm like, okay, well, I got me, right? Like, no matter what, I got me. And realistically, and I like me, I, I, like me. Me. I think I'm great. That's what me and T.O. got in common. I love me some I, I think I'm awesome, so I'm not worried about whether somebody likes me. And so I don't mind doing the digging because if you reject me, I'm like, okay, well, I still have me. And quite frankly, I have people that love me. And well, I actually have, I exactly, right. and I have my, my eldest sister from my dad's side who thinks, you know, I'm still awesome though i'm the wild child so i want to thank everybody for joining us and as usual thank you to our sponsor sorrel and sage they make the best skincare products out there on the market the world. right it is for sensitive skin and sensitive souls and simply just great people so make sure that you're following sorrel and sage on Instagram at Sorrel and Sage CA and then check out their website. They are going to be having a Mother's Day sale, so guys check them out on the website at www.shopsorrelandsage.com. Yes, Roberto. Yeah, no, su support her. She she is black excellence. Support that woman. This woman has become a chemist. Um, let me just give you some background on Sorrel and Sage. She is literally allergic to everything and the sun, right? Not under the sun, everything and the sun. And after years of having her own body go through and having to testing products that people claim were for sensitive skin, she just decided to start testing things and putting them together. And she created this amazing skincare line. Even the unscented products, they they still have great smell because she's literally perfected how to put things together that are not scented to give you a great smell. So I'm telling you, Soul and Sage, please represent again Instagram, Sorrel and Sage CA, 
And then shopsoilandsage.com is the website. Do you have any final words? No. Love y'all all. all. Thanks for joining us again. We'll be back next Thursday. Like I said, this is what we do. We'll be here every week. This is our therapy. Sometimes y'all don't know. We be kind of dragging it in here at like literally at like six (laughs) twenty. And the show just regenerates us. It rejuvenates us. This is our therapy. So this is actually uh, my final announcement. I wish I had it on the screen. Um, If you are in Canada, even if you're not, um, my daughter, my love, she premiered this week on Canada's Got Talent. So if you want to go look up Canada's Got Talent on um, YouTube, look up The Renegades. My daughter is part of the Renegades dance crew. She made it directly to the semifinals of Canada's Got Talent. When you look up the Renegades, the young lady who is holding the microphone on stage, that is my daughter. Um, That is my daughter and her team, the Renegades, made it to the semifinals of Canada's Got Talent. Um, And we're hoping that we'd make it to the finals come May 17th. So it's been an exciting week for me. I watched my daughter and all of the years, the last 12, 13 years she's put into dance, come on stage. And Canada has said that my daughter has talent. So please go out and find Canada's Got Talent on YouTube. Support the Renegades if you're in Toronto, please ensure that when it comes to the semifinals, if it's necessary, please vote for the Renegades and my Princess Boo train. <laughs> so I want to thank you all for joining. Make sure that you bring a little fuck your feelings into your life and to your relationship because it might just make you stay together. So thank you, everyone. We will see you next week. And again, big up Trey. Thank you, Sorrel and Sage. Bye-bye.